With this video, I will show you how to cite using IEEE style sheets. You will need to know how to do that for this class. If you start from the Engineering and Computer Science online guide and just click on the IEEE Referencing tab. Now IEEE refers to the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The IEEE style sheets is a referencing style that is often used with computer scientists and engineers. On the right hand side you have some information about in-text citations. These are the citations in the paper as you write the paper. So in-text citations consist of a reference number in square brackets which corresponds to the source in the reference list located at the end of the paper. The intent citations begin with the number one and continue in ascending order throughout the paper. When the authors are mentioned, the references will occur in brackets. For example, Jones 1 has argued, etc. Now, if there are more than three authors, use et al in italics after the first author of the source. So here, Holmes, as the first author of the source, et al, stands for and others in Latin, and there's the um, reference number linking it to the reference list. If you have several consecutive sources, uh, you can use a dash if it's three or more. So here I have several recent studies and robots as refers to reference one, reference two. Here I have three or more references consecutively, so I put a dash between them. This one refers to reference eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are different variants that you can use. According to three refers to reference three, or as shown in brackets 14 refers to reference 14. If you quote, then you need to put in the page numbers and place quotation marks in the quote. So here is one example as stated in reference 7, pages 3 to 4, and this is in brackets. There's a comma here, then the um, part of the uh, information that has been taken from a document is in quotation marks. And there's another example here. Now most computer scientists or engineers as well as other scientists do not use quotation marks. They don't quote people. They paraphrase. They put things in their own words. So for the most part you don't see these quotation marks in scientific papers. Okay, so that's in-text citations. If I scroll down a wee bit, I will talk about referencing examples. Now, references are placed on a separate page at the end of the paper, and they're headed as references. References start with the number one, square brackets, and they continue in, in ascending order. If you have more than six authors, you can just use et al in italics after the first author. The best way to understand how to construct this is to look at a few examples. So if I look at the first example, this is a article and I have number one in brackets. Then you have the names of the authors. So this is the first initials. Then the name of the author, then I have an end, then you have the initials of a second author, then the last name, then there's a comma here. Then you have the title of the uh, document, or of the article here, in quotation marks. Notice that there's a comma here as well. After that, you have the name of the journal. Now, the name of the journal is abbreviated. You don't spell out the full name. You will need to find the abbreviated format of that journal. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. After that, plug in the volume number. So it's vol with a um, period afterwards. 
and then the volume number. There's a comma there. NO refers to number or issue number. This is number 10. Comma. Then PP refers to the page ranges. And you put in the page ranges here. There's a comma here. Then you put in the year of publication. After that, another comma. And then you plug in the DOI number. And there's a period at the end of the DOI number. So the DOI, Digital Object Identifier, and as I mentioned in a previous video, it's a unique identifier for document. If there's no DOI number, you don't add a DOI number. And here is another example. And here you have an example of more than six authors. M. Ilto et al. And then I've placed the title again in the in quotation marks remember there's a comma and here you have the name of the journal abbreviated comma then you put the vol as the volume if there's no volume number you don't place the volume number next to the volume number there's the issue number if you don't have the issue number you don't place the issue number then PP is the page ranges and at the end the year of publication. Sometimes the publications do have a month and the month needs to be abbreviated. On the left hand side shows you the different abbreviations for the different months that you can use. Okay, if I scroll down a wee bit, here you see an example of a book. So these are the authors, P. Klaus and P. Horn comma, then you have the title of the book, now this is in italics, then you have Cambridge, that's the place of publication, and then you have the name of the publisher, then there's a comma, and then the year of publication, 1986. With websites, it's pretty much very similar. The name of the author, there's a period here, then you put in the title of the website in quotation marks. There's a period here. The title of the actual um, page here. And then, if there is the title of the page, and then the URL of the document. You also need to put the accession information. This is the date that you've accessed access that um, document. So in brackets, this is round brackets, accessed February the 1st, 2009. Okay, so if I go back a bit, the last thing I just want to mention, there's a link here, IEEE Star Sheet. If you click on that, This will give you more examples of how to construct your citations, and your references. These are different types of references. Here I can see books, books translated, books with a chapter title, books with editor, conference proceedings, courses, handbooks, uh, lectures, and you have periodicals, different reports, um, citing software, standards. If I move down a bit, uh, the first thing they talk about is the references in text. That's what I've talked about earlier. Then references within a reference. Then you have the styles, is the books. Okay, let's go to... Um, periodicals, or journals. I've got, I see patterns here. There you go, periodicals. And again, it gives you a basic format here. So you can follow this format. And it gives you a number of different examples of different um, journals. OK, so if I go back, Uh, 
Uh, the next thing I'd just like to mention is finding the journal abbreviations. There are a number of different ways where you can find the abbreviated format of the journal. And here are some links that will help you out. If I click on the first one, Cassie source link, I've also placed it at the top here. And just click on I accept. So just put in a few keywords of the name of the journal. I'm just going to put computer in there. Click on search. And say I was looking for computer-aided biomanufacturing. That's the name of the journal. I want to find the abbreviated format. So I just click on that and it will have the abbreviated title. So it, all you have to do is just cut and paste. If you can't find it here, if I go back, there's other sources as well that you can use. There's also a video that describes uh, in-text and uh, referencing examples uh, if you want to watch that. Okay, folks, well, this is pretty much it for referencing. What I'd like you to do is to use that um, article that you found in the previous video and construct a uh, reference in IEEE style sheets. I'll give you five minutes. Thank you for listening.